okay so from the name itself we can understand the function of uh, this module direct memory access so we are going to access the memory directly without the help of cpu so here you remember the system architecture here we have the system architecture and here always we have memories but we have to access the data uh, we have so many peripherals and we need to always transfer the data between peripherals uh, between peripherals and memories or between memories so for each time when we transfer the data like that if we use this cpu resource you can imagine so we are just going to use the cpu resource unnecessarily so in that case uh, the cpu performance will easily get affected so the main program will get slowed down and then cpu will help the data transfer instead instead of using the cpu for the data transfer purpose we are using dma another controller this one is helping all the data transfers between the memories between the memory and peripherals and so on so that is the concept of this dma okay so direct memory access uh, dma embedded in the stm32 microcontrollers if you take any version you can see this dma it's used to provide high speed data transfers between peripherals and memory or between memory to memory or memory and memory so data can be quickly moved by the dma without any cpu in, uh, action so you do not really need to use cpu resource so this keeps cpu resource free for other operations so as i mentioned cpu can uh, perform the data handling or data operations or data computations instead of handling the data transfer uh, so dme channels can access any memory mapped location including uh, ahb peripherals yeah, uh, so here, for example, the CRC generator, clock signal generator, and AHB memories, for example, HRAM, HRAM flash memories, and so on, and APB peripherals. So APB is connected with all the peripherals. So we had seen that in the architecture. So here we had seen this uh, AHB and the APB uh, buses, high speed and low speed buses, and these APB buses are connected to peripherals. So now we are talking about the data transfer between these peripherals. And also we have memories. Uh, so here, for example, here we have memories. So everything is going through these buses. So this is handled by this DMA. Uh, of course, each DMA has, uh, okay, each microcontroller has several DMA modules and each DMA module have several channels. Okay, so ASB peripherals and APB peripherals. So that is uh, part of this DMA channels. They are uh, they can access any memory mapped location by using these uh, buses. And DMA controller supports two ASB light ports. So one is master port, another one is slave port. For example, uh, master port is used to uh, or is used by DMA channels to autonomously access memory mapped locations. So it can autonomously means like without help of any other uh, control signals, it can autonomously access the memory mapped locations to take the data, uh, memory or peripherals registers. Uh, and an another one is a slave port because we said it has two AHB. So this is corresponding to AHB bus. Uh, the another one is called a slave port. So it's providing access to the DMA controller uh, control and status registers. So here, this one, the first light port is corresponding to peripheral registers. The second one, slave port is corresponding to status registers and some control signals. And we can also see here, most APB peripherals, this is the APB low speed bus, can be configured to assert DMA requests. So, um, Okay, so you can just read this. I, I re really do not prefer to read the text from the slides. Um, so this is just explaining uh, everything uh, in, like a summary for you to understand. And also this DMA have two units. The first one is called DMA Max and second one is called DMA Controller. So the Max is 
a mux means what there is the multi multiplexer so it enables the user to map request to channels of course there are so many channels and we have maybe more than one request so we need to map the request correct request to the correct channel so for that purpose we are using multiplexer so i think you should know about the concept of multiplexer and demultiplexer you should study about this in digital electronics or the digital part of the course um, so this is uh, you know combinational circuits sequential circuits in the sequential circuits we have the multiplexer demultiplexer encoder decoder so how it can convert several inputs into single output or the vice versa so you have um, so instead of having multiple outputs we are just get, uh, only sorry instead of having several when we have several inputs we enable only single input at the output so by using the enable signal so this is the uh, you have to know the logic of mux how it works then you can easily understand here so we when we have multiple request then it can enable the right request to the right channel because each dma has multiple channels uh, dma controller also have three interrupt outputs connected to the nested vector interrupt controller so here you can see dma controller has three interrupt outputs so it has three interrupt outputs so interrupt has nvic we had seen that also in the previous lecture nvic means uh, of course this next nested vector interrupt controller so this is setting up the priority to the interrupt so for example the cpu is um, where is the pen cpu is executing the main program suddenly you are getting interrupt maybe interrupt from the timer or interrupt from adc or interrupt from another peripheral so you have so many uh, interrupts but you have to set the priority maybe this one comes first and this one comes second and this one comes third but each interrupt has its own priority level so for example the interrupt 3 if it has the high priority even though it comes at the last so but the cpu will immediately take this interrupt and then execute this one and then after complete this one then it will look at the priority and then if for example this one is the second priority then it will take this interrupt to one and then execute and then it will see the next uh, next interrupt and so on and then after complete all the interrupts then it will jump back to this main program and then it will execute so where we are setting this priority to interrupts that is nvic so here uh, so this dma controller is also interacting with this nvic um, so on data transfer uh, of course you have to why we are why this dma controller is communicating with this nvic because dma is helping the data transfer so data transfer from one lo one location to another location maybe this is the source uh, register so that is what it's called source address because each register or memory location has its own address because when you write the data you should know where you are writing the data then only when you need the data you can read the data so you are writing in the particular address and you are reading from the same address so when you need the data you recall from this address and take the data out so everything is connected so here for example this is the source address from the source register and then when you need the data to another register this is called the destination now so this is the destination address so here we have somewhere here yeah destination address so we have to move the data from source address to destination address without help of cpu dma is handling this this is the cpu we are not using this cpu resource instead the dma is providing the control to transfer the data from source address to destination address also with the help if the request is coming from the interrupt then of course it needs to see the priority and then uh, help the data transfer so that is what mentioned here uh, so just remember these two things uh, dma max and then dma controller this is also part of the dma
so please uh, go through this if you want to learn more about dma you can go through this uh, uh, pdf i had given uh, the direct page access i think uh, in the dma part so you will learn a little more detail about dma so as i already mentioned dma controller has seven channels or multiple channels uh, particularly if we talk about how many number of channels in the stm32 uh, for example f101 or f103 uh, so it has seven channels in total uh, each one is dedicated to managing memory access request from many peripherals so we have so many peripherals in the system architecture we had seen so each peripheral needs data it, need, it needs the data back and forth so all these uh, data transfers are handled by this dma controller through seven uh, through multiple channels so for each channel we have to also limit the data size so the source and destination data size uh, is independently configurable so it can be either 8 bit or 16 bit or 32 bit so we have choices so whatever the number of bits we can uh, we want to include we can add that in the data packets during the data transfer and actually you are not really going to do anything manually everything is happening automatically inside the microcontroller so but just now you are learning just theory how it's happening what is happening inside uh, the data transfer size uh, can be pre-programmed up to as i said like the maximum data size is 65535 bytes i think this is the 2 power 2 to the power 16 you can calculate this 2 to the power 16 or 2 to the power 8 i don't think 2 to the power 8 so we always uh, you know logarithmic uh, In electronics, whenever we calculate things, it's based on the log base two or log base 10. So here we can, uh, the data transfer size can be programmed up to this much, the maximum value. And circular buffer mode is available to support a continuous flow of data. Okay, so this is about uh, DMA and the DMA in low power modes, even though the when the microcontroller is under low power mode or low power operation, still this DMA will be in kind of active because anytime it should help or it should give the control signals for the data transfer. So under different mode, what will be the operation or the, the status of the DMA that's given here in this table, we can just take a look at it. Uh, so mostly in the running mode, it's active. Of course, that is default. And low power run, when the microcontroller is running under low power, still it's active. Under sleep mode, it's also active. Under low power sleep, it's also active. And stop mode or uh, stop, even in stop mode, stop, we have two modes. That is a stop zero and stop one. So, uh, so here also you can see clocked signals or the clock system clock is frozen just to, to save the power instead of the clock generators keep running and generating the clock signals we just keep them off uh, so technically we call this as a frozen it's just frozen it's not generating the clock signals so at the time dme registers will be in redemption mode and for standby also uh, shutdown also so same like how we are uh, dealing with our laptop or our PC. So we can also have everything, uh, uh, all these modes in our laptops. So we can have in standby mode or sleep mode or run mode. So why we are having so many modes in our PC? Just to, to save the power.